the topic for this podcast is radiation on separating facts versus myths the primary purpose of this particular podcast is to make sure to nav- how to navigate between the many questions or many issues related surrounding around radiation and how to navigate between the facts and myths because majority of the time um it's the myths which scares the patient the physicians or the ordering physicians and I want to take this opportunity to uh navigate or separate some of these issues giving some aspects of the facts about the radiation so when you say radiation this is the type of concept people have uh because they see many of these um, what you hear about radiation after effects long term effects and so forth and this is com- kind of supplemented by the comic characters and the books we read and here is an example of couple of comic characters where incredible hulk fantastic four all these characters in fact had um, in the if you read the comic characters they're all uh, um, came about in a very authentic scientific place and that brings more closer for people to believe it and uh, with some radiation exposure they have developed this incredible feat and for every one good character there are many thousands of bad characters and that's why the psyche of the radiation impact long term impact is in our background worrying about the long term effects and that's also kind of accelerated or aided by some of the sensational articles we read in the news news media the first article in here is on the ct scans in children linked to cancer later was published back in 2001 the similar articles have seemed to continue in the media even today um in fact in 2015 the article in consumer reports caused even more concern for the patients uh, and the physician in in general but if you read it more detail lot of it is extrapolated information or um the the reference papers may have one sentence about radiation ill effects and that's magnified so if, so as a general public if they are looking about radiation dose in city and if you go to google and search it there are millions of web page comes out of which 90% has misinformation basically myths and very few are very authentic information and it becomes very di- challenging for general audience the general phys- pay a, um, general public to separate this and that's the purpose of this particular talk what i want to focus here is like uh, let me start of five different facts thing like is it true or false such as is all types of radiation have same effects does all the radi- all the tissues in our body have same sensitivity to radiation radiation risk at imaging doses are well established with real data let's see whether it's true or false we want to examine if the radiation remains in x-ray room even after x-rays or cts are done the statement is all types of radiation have same effects it's false because radiation risks varies by type and energy of radiation exposure in fact we define this by a quality factor the biological effect of the radiation nature is defined by a quality factor <laughs> sorry okay. let's start from the first statement all types of radiation have same effects it's false because radiation risks varies by type and energy of the radiation exposure in fact in order to quantify the risk there is a concept called the quality factor assigned for different type of radiation we define that by the biological effect inherited by this type of radiation exposure for example exposure to alpha particles or high energy neutrons can have about 20 times greater biological effects than similar exposure to x rays so here are given some established radiation quality factors so in summary all type of radiation do not have the same effects they vary depending on the type of radiation let me start with the statement all tissues have same sensitivity to radiation false because radiation sensitivity varies among tissues 
and the biological effects are defined by what is called as a tissue weighting factors. Here are some latest tissue weighting factors according to the International Council of Radiation Protection Report 103. This is published in 2009 and the ICRP 103 uh, report assigned the following organs as one of the highest um, sensitivi sensitivity to radiation. Breast, colon, lung, stomach, red bone marrow and the remainder tissues assigned a weighting factor of 0 0.12. What does it mean? Which means if a person is exposed in the breast region or in a on, the, on the skin itself, the, the effect of the radiation is more with respect to the breast exposure compared to the bone surface or the brain or the skin surface and that's accounted by this tissue weighting factor. The third statement, radiation risks at imaging doses are well established. Again, this is a false statement because the radiation do risks at higher radiation doses have some biological data, human data to support. However, at the radiation dose levels, we see in typical imaging procedures, the there is not substantial data is available to link any type of radiation risk. And this brings to a lot of confusion for the patients, uh, general uh, uh, physicians ordering the imaging because they equate the radiation effects which is to some extent established at the high doses and they equate the same to the radiation risk at the imaging doses and that brings a lot of confusion. Because there are some evidence exists for radiation doses greater than 300 millisievert. Comparatively, the typical imaging radiation doses ranges from anywhere from 0 0.01 millisievert to about 30 millisievert. So if you can see here, the imaging doses ranges is almost an order of 10 times less than what the evidence we have seen for some radiation doses greater than 300 millisievert. So this is very important to clarify for anyone worried about radiation risk so that they can separate what the risk, actual risk we have seen in high doses compared to the actual risk we can expect from the uh, doses at the imaging levels which is almost very, very small. The, the fourth statement, radiation remains in x-ray rooms even after x-rays or CT scans are done. Again, it's false. It's like a light switch. If the light switch is turned on, the light is, you can see the visible light, but when the cut, when you turn the switch off, the light, visible light is gone. The same thing here. If the x-rays or CTs are not on, there is no residual x-rays in the x-ray room. And the main primary type of x-ray sources in any x-ray room or CT rooms are the primary radiation which only comes on when the system is turned on. Scatter radiation is during the x-ray procedures where the patient will act like a scatter medium and there are some small amount of leakage radiation. All of them exist only when the x-rays or RCTs is turned on. So, in general, the biological effect of radiation can be classified into two categories. One, the stochastic effect, which is basically um, uh, cancers in exposed individuals observed 3 to 20 years later, mutations in offsprings of exposed individuals observed in future generation, and the second type of effect is called the non-stochastic effect, also called as the deterministic effect. This occurs uh, due to direct damage to tissue uh, that occurs due to local cell death. And this is observed within days to weeks. What about the genetic effect seen in medical imaging? As such, we have no direct evidence for radiation-induced genetic effect in humans for radiation exposures from medical imaging procedures. The modeling the cancer risks for medical imaging want to explain this particular model. Which is the right model is the big question. As shown on this particular slide here is the, uh, um, the cancer risks on the y-axis and the radiation dose on the, on the x-axis. The black dots are some epidemiological data which links the doses to the cancer risk. Again, those doses are at a higher doses. But at the doses around the medical imaging procedures, like for example, around less than 100 millisievert, um, 
the data from epidemiological day and in vitro studies support all models many of the models um such as um hypersensitivity a linear linear no threshold model and also harmesis model showing that uh, primary repair so is good or even some beneficial effect from low radiation because of various model can fit the existing data or non existent data there is lot of confusion about the cancer long term cancer risk for medical imaging procedure because there is also lot of uncertainty in the cancer risk estimation shown here on this particular slide on the right side on the top most is the um added risk versus the radiation doses and the big question is how do you extrapolate all the way to the doses typically seen in imaging on this particular graph on the right most corner is the data where we have some data showing some evidence of added risk at a very high doses more than 200 to 300 millisievert but at the doses typical doses seen in diagnostic medical imaging procedure such as less than 0.1 millisievert to 30 millisievert there is no good substantial data available therefore you can fit the curve in many different ways and that's where the confusion comes into picture no strong evidence for long term cancer risk is established uh, for the imaging doses so in general the caution is not to let radiation scare the patient care, care because often we overweigh the risk of radiation and hesitate to order a necessary medical x-ray procedure such as a ct or x-ray second is one should not apply the population based risk estimation to individual without taking into account the benefits of a particular procedure it is also important to understand the uncertainty in the established risk estimation therefore we should have to disregard and we have to make sure that not take into account that uncertainty is actually can impact the patient care plus the one should not unilaterally reduce the radiation dose to reduce the risk and thereby jeopardizing the image quality because one should not accept lower image quality to reduce radiation dose finally one should not be unreasonably frighten the patient and families for radiation risk which is not well established there are many many useful information available and in authentic place and we need to navigate between some of the myths surrounding the radiation dose with the fact finding pack choosing image modality based on radiation risk is also against the patient care so simply avoiding a ct or x rays for a a potential for a, a radiation risk that doesn't have good data is wrong for the patient care in general as long as the medical imaging procedure are appropriately necessary and established the risk from radiation re doses in medical imaging is substantially lower than what it's been touted out thank you